time it is. Marvin Devine. Hoover. Axel. And you know how we do. <laughs> yeah, I got the juice, yeah, I got the juice We game cool, make them look like cool Welcome to another episode of Kidney Hub East Africa. I am half your host, Steve the Kidney Nurse. Welcome, everyone. Today, we have a great informational show I think you will want to stick around and listen to. Give us 60 minutes, and we'll give you important information on why Fluid is important for people on dialysis. Tips on how to control your fluid management and other ways that can help you manage your fluid intake. So to help me as always is my other good friend, podcast host, all the way from Nairobi, Kenya, none other than brother Moses Kennedy, also known as the Kidney Ambassador. Let's bring our brother in. Moses, brother Moses, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oh, slide over Once to again. the to your right a little bit. Oh, there you go. There you go. It's good to see you. How's your week been? Ah, uh, it's been a struggle throughout the week. I've been very tired. That is why maybe we haven't communicated for long. Ah, uh, yeah, but I've been really tired. I, maybe I, I was thinking I will not make it today, but I thank God. Oh, I'm my God. Life for the show. 
man. I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. And as always, man, I want to do, you know, everything I can to help you through this, through this process, man. Uh, you know, and it's unfortunate that thousands of other brothers and sisters in East Africa, not just East Africa, but all over the world is struggling with uh, kidney disease or kidney failure and ways to manage this condition because of the multiple challenges that uh, warriors face. And this is one challenge that we're going to talk about today, uh, struggling with fluid management. Do, do you have those issues, Brother Moses, or have you seen other uh, brothers and sisters undergoing dialysis in Kenya uh, struggle with managing their fluid intake? Because I know it has to get hot over there sometimes. Absolutely. Uh, uh, there is a, a real struggle simply because uh, people, uh, most warriors do not uh, 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 relate well with the electrolytes and, uh, and fluids. And then uh, uh, they end up uh, 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 having uh, uh, medic medical emergencies that sometimes cost them and they end up not uh, able to 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 afford uh, the treatment that is required due to a complicated a complication of uh, fluid overload and definitely that is how uh we've lost many warriors uh related to fluid just like uh, uh three days ago i mean three days to uh to a uh, world kidney day we just lost uh, a warrior Mm. who was struggling with uh, breathing issues, then uh, 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 he has a lot of water that needed to be uh, to be uh, uh, taken care of. But then uh, uh, what happens is that he went into a public hospital and then uh, 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 thinking that that is where he can get help and then he lost it while queuing on the line. So, oh wow! Yes. Wow! My condolence, my condolence to the family. And so, I I, I want to ask if there's anyone watching this broadcast, whether you're on TikTok, Facebook, or YouTube, that is on dialysis. Have you ever had to do an extra treatment due to extra fluid? I I see it all the time where we have kidney warriors who have a struggle managing their fluid and they had to come in an extra treatment. So instead of three days a week, they got to come in four days a week. And it's Monday and Wednesday, Friday and Saturday. Now, nobody likes to give their weekends away to a medical treatment, but this is what that person has to do in order to uh, get their fluid back in control. But they also have to play a part too. And so, how? and also, how many people on dialysis ended up in the hospital due to fluid overload? Brother Moses just mentioned, he had a, a, a just told the story of a, a kidney warrior right before World Kidney Day went to the public hospital because of breathing issues due to fluid. And so this is why these types of broadcast and education sessions are needed to reiterate the importance of, of, of managing your fluid and ways that uh, or, or, or things you can implement to control or manage your fluid intake. And so, as we start, by managing fluid and sodium intake, these symptoms can be prevented. If one was to manage their fluid and sodium intake, 
these symptoms that I'm about to uh, talk about can be prevented. High blood pressure between treatment, low blood pressure during treatment, cramping during treatment, shortness of breath, swelling, damage to the heart. And so I asked this question to kidney warriors watching this and even to Brother Moses. What are some of the symptoms that I just announced have you experienced due to fluid overload? Brother Moses, have you experienced any of these symptoms? High blood pressure between treatments, low blood pressure during treatment, cramping during treatment, shortness of breath, swelling, and damage to the heart as a result uh, of fluid overload. Talk about that. Definitely. Uh, just like uh, any other warriors, uh, I, I've been struggling with the uh, fluid uh, uh, management and then uh, uh, many, especially when the when the weathers are hot currently like um uh it's sunny during the day and hot uh, at night especially this is a season that it is really hot in kenya so you realize uh you want to drink a lot of water to quench your thirst uh you want to take so many cold fluids uh in order to manage your fluid but then uh, uh sometimes uh uh, you end up not uh, realizing that you have taken a lot of water. Why? Because uh, if you don't do that tracking of the amount you've taken, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, daily routine like uh, managing water, you know, eating specific food, I mean, you find it uh, uh, really tiresome. So uh, in other words, you want to indulge and then you end up having a complication arising due to uh, 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 fluid overload. And then uh, mine has been uh, a case of uh, uh, low pressure that uh, takes time to, to be stabilized. Uh, should, I, should I take more water and they need to uh, uh, get to uh, my dry weight? So yes. Uh, I've experienced one, especially low blood pressure. Right, right. Thank you for that, uh, Brother Moses, because this this is serious business. Um, you know, I was just sitting here thinking if we weren't doing this show, how would other people know? I mean, not to say that one can't do their own research or get information from the dialysis center on fluid management, but Normally, one is not thinking about going out and, and, and doing research or or asking someone uh, for some information on fluid management. I mean, you're going to have a small percentage that may do that. But for the most part, people are trying to live their life, go to dialysis, get their treatment, go home, and continue with life. Because even though even though one gets diagnosed with kidney failure, cancer, or have to go undergo any type of treatment, life still goes on. Life doesn't stop. And so um, that's why it, it's critical to... Uh, Tune in and dialogue with shows like this where you have uh, one person that works in dialysis and is an educator and the other that uh, happens to undergo dialysis treatment and there's an advocate and educator in his own right. And so uh, as we continue what do we want to know about fluid or what should one know about fluid when they're about to undergo or undergoing hemodialysis? 
one most people feel best we said most not all but most people feel best when drinking 32 ounces of fluid or less per day i had a, a person uh in my TikTok chat they said they between friday and monday they only gained between one to two liters and so they don't experience none of those symptoms that some people experience uh on monday morning like steve what are those symptoms swelling or edema um shortness of breath and so when we look at 16 i mean when we look at 32 ounces of fluid or less per day just know 16 ounces two cups of fluid equal a half kilogram or one pound 16 ounces two cups of fluid equals half a kilo or one pound also aim to gain no more than one kilogram per day that's 2.2 pounds one kilo is 2.2 pounds brother moses you want to elaborate on what i just talked about most people feel best when drinking 32 ounces of fluid or less per day oh yes uh uh normally uh i will equate uh 32 ounce to uh, about about four quarters eh, of a glass uh, i don't know how to 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 relate on the figure uh, uh to relate it in uh, in liters or uh, i guess it is 32 ounce is equivalent to uh equivalent to 1.5 one liter. liters one kilo one, one liter one liter yeah 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 so uh, uh most of the time uh, uh one can add on uh just a liter within a day because uh there are so many factors in place that happens uh, uh number one is maybe lack of knowledge of uh, tracking uh, the amount you take so yes uh, uh personally i've been adding uh three or three and a half but okay. i'm really working hard on it yeah, yeah no one said it's easy but see you recognize it it's a difference like if you didn't recognize it and you just don't care you going down to the carry out or the restaurant and getting two cups of, of 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 fluid and a cup of ice i see people man i kid you not one of the the vitas dialysis clinic i used to work at a long time ago they used to have an ice machine now they took out the ice machines in dialysis clinic but they used to and some dialysis clinics, they may still have them. But this one had an ice machine. You had people who used to come down to the center on their days off from dialysis. They come down with a paper bag, with a plastic bag, like the small ones, to fill up with ice. <laughs> they wasn't... It wasn't their day for treatment, but they come down just to get ice. Be like, what you doing here? Oh, I just came to get some ice. <laughs> what? So this, this is serious. Um, because of with kidney disease, one gets dry mouth. The electrolytes are off. And so let's talk about Brother Moses what count as fluid see some people may not know when dealing with this condition what counts as fluid and this is where they may be stumbling at and may not knew that that 
this particular uh, food or item counts as fluid. Now, always remember this. Any drink, any drink or food that is liquid at room temperature, at room temperature, such as gelatin and homemade soup, counts as fluid. And just know that one cup of ice melts to about four ounces of fluid. Also, what's important to understand, sugar, caffeine, smoking, and salt may increase thirst. Now, I don't know about over in Kenya, Brother Moses, but here I see some kidney warriors after they finish dialysis, they go outside and smoke a cigarette. Now, I'm not knocking anyone. I want to say, if you can, try not to smoke. But we, we all adults. And no matter how much education you tell someone, at the end of the day, that's their decision. We can give all the education and talk blue in the face. But at the end of the day, the person receiving the information, it's their decision whether they change their lifestyle, whether they do this or do that. But smoking can cause dry mm -hmm. mouth, which in turn increase thirst. Sugar, people drink coffee. Sugars and candy. Sugar is about a lot of stuff that we eat. Caffeine. Salt. These are all things that one may not be thinking about when the, during the weekend. And some of the food that they may be ingesting may have some of these ingredients, which may in turn cause them to drink more. And people, I don't know why I'm drinking so much. I don't know why. Why am I drinking so much? Well, this may be one of the reasons. Sugar. Caffeine intake. Your sodium. Or if you smoke cigarettes or cigars. Brother Moses, any input? Absolutely. Um, uh uh, sometimes um, uh, we even take this food uh, passively, not knowing uh, that we are taking fluids. For example, when you take a snack of uh, 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 fruits rich in uh, in water, like uh, pineapple or, or watermelon, uh, it means uh, you might not uh, realizing that you are taking much more uh, water. So uh, uh, what happens is that... Uh, it add up to the water within your body, the buildup uh, uh, passively without you uh, realizing that, Brother Steve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of tips. We got so much tips is coming out of our ears. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, we just had a, a comment from... Um, Miss Elizabeth Oldham from, uh, I don't want to mess this up, but if I pronounce this wrong or get the name or wording wrong, please correct me in the chats, Miss Oldham. Ohio State Kidney Advocates. Um, but she asked, do you have any fluid advice for pre-dialysis patients? Uh, water will always follow. Yep, see, I, I talked about that. And my TikTok chat, M. Foster, she's right. Water always follows sodium because I talked about the chemistry element behind that. You look at the element board, the the the, the sodium, um, um, 
uh, molecule and a hydrogen molecule. They both bond together. That's why uh, wherever uh, M. Foster says, wherever water goes, I mean, wherever sodium goes, water follows. I, I talked about that right before we came on in my TikTok chat. People go eat Chinese food, a piece of chicken. And next thing you know, you got that 32 ounce beverage. That's why you go out to the fast food, they got the meals now. So you get a Big Mac. And look at the sodium. Sodium in the French fries. Sodium in the Big Mac. And then they're going to top it off with a 32-ounce soda. And some places allow you to get refills. You see the trappings? So let's look at some tips, Brother Moses, to track. Let's talk about tracking fluid intake, especially if you're a kidney warrior. And you can use this if you're in Nairobi, uh, Kissimmee, uh, Pipeline, uh, or wherever in Kenya or East Africa, or anywhere around the world that's dealing with uh, fluid management. You can use these same tips to track fluid intake. And even for loved ones, taking care of someone on dialysis like your mom, your dad, your wife, your uh, husband, brother, sister, child. Because we know kidney failure doesn't discriminate, but it impacts minority population more than any other race. And so, let's look at some tips to track fluid intake. One, measure fluids using a measuring cup. In fact, you can go to the dollar store. I don't know if they got dollar store in East Africa. But here in the United States, you like you see the dollar uh tree and the family dollars next to the dialysis center. Go in there and invest in a measuring cup. Two, find out how many ounces are in each cup, mug, and glass used at home. See, now you got to be intentional. Don't just pour fluid in a cup and drink it, but know how many ounces so you can keep track of that 32 ounce per day. Keep track of fluid intake by writing it down. Also, read beverage labels to find out how many ounces are in each container. Just like this water bottle. Right here in the front, it has 500 milliliters. That's a half a liter. And, 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 and if that was the case, that would be half of my fluid intake for the day. So that's why you got to give or take. And you're taking medication. Some people may have to take medicine three times a day. Make sure you may use one of those medicine cups. Also, remember that all fluid counts. This includes fluids you drink during dialysis, fluids used to take medication. Now, let's get to the good stuff on tips to manage uh, uh, fluid thirst. Tips to manage thirst. Oh, Brother Moses, I'm sorry. Anything you want to elaborate on what I just talked about coming to uh, tracking fluid intake? Uh, uh 
um, uh, oh, oh, let me just add on uh, uh, on something that uh, 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 tracking uh, uh, fluid intake uh, maybe is the most uh, challenging part of it, and uh, uh, it really calls for discipline and knowing uh, uh, what you are doing and the benefit of doing that, Brother Steve. All right, all right. So uh, let's look at some tips to manage thirst. And some of this, warriors, you may have heard, and some you may not. Again, that's what this show is all about, uh, learning uh, new information that you may not have known before. One, what you can do to manage thirst, rinse your mouth frequently. Rinse your mouth frequently. Two, brush your teeth to keep your mouth minty fresh. Brush your teeth to keep your mouth minty fresh. Three, use a mist bottle to spray your mouth. Get a small bottle with, with that spray nozzle and put it on the mist and spread it in your mouth. Four, chew gum. They got sports gum that you can chew that, that quenches your thirst. Five, suck on hard candies or lemon or lime wedges. Lemon or lime wedges or hard sour candy. Six, try eating frozen fruit instead of ice or water. Frozen fruit. Next one, use lip balm to prevent dry lips. Use lip balm to prevent dry lips. And last one, if you have diabetes, Manage your blood sugar. Also, I talked about monitoring fluid intake. Patients should keep track of their fluid intake and aim to stay within the recommended limits set by your doctor. We talked about limiting high food, uh, fluid foods and drinks. Patients should avoid or limit consumption of high fluid foods and drinks such as soups, ice cream, gelatin, and certain fruits and vegetables with high water content. Brother Moses, anything you want to uh, elaborate on about the tips to manage the thirst that I talked about? Rinsing your mouth off frequently, brushing your teeth, uh, using a mint spray, I mean, using a mist bottle to spray your mouth, chewing gum, sucking on hard candies or lemon wedges. Uh, eating frozen fruits instead of ice water, or ice or water, or lip balm, or uh, diabetes, managing the uh, blood sugar. Anything you want to elaborate on? Oh yes, um, uh, personally, I've been, I've been. Sometimes I use uh, ice cube water, ice cube that I just uh, 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 put in my mouth for a while and then uh, uh, remove it. But then um, I know uh, there comes a lot of challenges, especially uh, uh, frozen foods and uh, I mean, frozen fruits and uh, having uh, cold, uh, cold and frozen uh, uh, food is also not, uh, a, is also not uh, an access to uh, many warriors. So what is there is sometimes water and water you would want to take as much as possible before you lose your quench in other words if if one has to uh the cheapest way uh that i also want to advise warriors to 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 work on is uh, uh maybe to use ice cube just simple ice cubes then uh, uh, shortly then uh, remove it yeah 
All right, all right. Um, so let's talk about a little bit about sodium, what to know about sodium. Because um, again, this is one of the culprits when dealing with uh, managing fluids is sodium. So if that's the case, you should know about sodium. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Just know that sodium is a mineral. Sodium is a mineral that can cause increased thirst fluid retention, and high blood pressure. Those three things are really important or critical for someone undergoing kidney dialysis. Increased thirst, fluid retention, and high blood pressure. Also, Something to know about salt. The recommended, the recommended amount of sodium is 2,000 milligrams per day. But I would even take it a step further and suggest it be 1,500 milligrams. You're like, Steve, Steve, I need my salt. Well, use herbs and spices. Also, know that fresh food is best. Then you want to limit your salt when you cook. You got a lot of people when they cooking. You got the salt shaker in their hand. Or even after, they got the salt shaker. Try flavoring food with salt-free seasonings, blends, and herbs. Again, try flavoring your food with salt-free seasoning blends or herbs. Also, look online for low sodium recipes. There are definitely sites out there with one uh, and information for low sodium recipes. And uh, let's talk about high sodium foods to limit. We are, I ain't gonna say we all know, but we should know that sodium is hitting in many foods. Even if it's not added during cooking, it's still hitting in a lot of foods under certain names. Sodium this, sodium that. Hydrosodium, hyposodium. I mean, anytime you see something that got the sodium prefix to it, it got salt in it. Now, as we say, sodium is hidden in many foods, even if it's not added during cooking. Tip for that. Check the milligrams a sodium on the nutrition facts label. Brother Moses, over in Kenya, on the, some of the canned foods or food items, do they have uh, nutrition fact on it? Uh, are the ingredients or what's in that product? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, all, almost all food uh, that is uh, industrially uh, manufactured, uh, name it milk, uh, sugar, or or even uh, cookies, you know, 
they indicate uh, the food level, maybe what amount of potassium, uh, sodium, and sometimes uh, sodium comes in several names, but uh, still the, the thing is sodium. So uh, I want to also to, to advise uh, fellow warriors that uh, uh, whatever the name it comes, it is sodium. And then, uh, you know, there are also foods that are hidden, uh, sodium hidden, uh, something like bread. For bread to be produced, there must be uh, sodium, but then it is hidden sodium. It is never indicated on on as in as uh, food label but then there are several uh, other things that comes in the name of sodium like sea salt it is still sodium so sodium will always remain sodium brother steve and uh, uh we must watch it out absolutely i agree and m foster thank you for adding to the discussion uh i, I really appreciate you coming in from the youtube channel and adding uh, uh, dialogue and information. So thank you. Uh, M. Foster says, one small packet from a food service restaurant is a thousand milligrams. A thousand milligrams. Uh, or one gram. Best way to visualize how small 1,000 milligrams is. And you can see how you can go throughout the day when they say that recommended daily allowance for sodium is 2,000 milligrams. And you go into the restaurant and you get one packet of salt. You dumping it on your food like, damn, I can't wait to get home. You got the little pack. You open it. So you add in salt on top of salt because the food, whether it's carry out or cooked, has sodium in it as well. So now instead of getting the, doing the recommended 2,000 milligrams per day, you may be having up to six, 7,000 milligrams of sodium ingested throughout the day then you wonder why the blood pressure is elevated this is why we're just not talking about it to have one think oh okay that could be the reason why my pressure is high or oh, i got a lot of fluid on. also with high sodium foods to limit processed foods including canned food and processed meat such as bacon and sausage you got a lot of kidney warriors that eat these breakfast sausages in the morning they may have uh, uh, Sausage and egg sandwich, bacon, egg sandwich, and again, that's high in sodium. So, we have to be mindful when we're trying to control thirst of what one is ingesting. Uh, uh, Brother Moses, I see you got a lot of background noise. Oh, yes. Yeah, you must be in a public, public space. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so here's a tip. Here's a tip if you're dealing with processed foods, including canned and processed meat, such as bacon or sausage, and like in Baltimore, Maryland, 
You got people eating Scrapple. <laughs> All right. And that's high in sodium. And so here's a tip. Try to choose fresh or frozen foods instead of canned or the bacon. So find a fruit that you can eat that doesn't have a lot of fluid in it or that's high in potassium or high in phosphorus. And substitute that for the egg, I'm sorry, for the sausage or bacon. Brother Moses, anything you want to elaborate on, on high sodium foods to limit? Oh, yes. Uh, 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 just like... Uh, mm, uh, every almost every food even has a uh, uh, sodium in content, but then including even an egg um, um, has sodium in it. But then uh, uh, the most important is uh, tracking the right amount, knowing how much salt you have consumed uh, in a given serving, so that uh, uh, you don't you don't you don't uh, end up consuming a lot of salt. But then uh, salt is one thing that, uh, sodium is one thing that uh, is easier because once you develop that uh, taste bud of consuming a small amount of sodium in food, then uh, definitely you are well to go because yeah, at any given time when you take, uh, uh, when you sense more sodium in food, then your test bud will definitely just piece it off. And then that is how uh, uh, pretty again it is to uh, uh, to inculcate, in 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 incorporate uh, 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 that discipline of taking uh, the right amount of sodium. Mm -hmm. oh. That oh. is why... I'm sorry, go ahead, brother. That, that is why you you see many a times uh, uh, even food that we eat uh, if it's done with spices uh, personally I do it with a lot of chilies and then I don't feel the the, the urge of having uh, several salt several amount of salt uh, uh, in my food but then that is the way to go forward. There's several uh, other also uh, tips that people apply on daily basis. Yes, yes. And I just wanted to thank P. Teach. Uh, you're welcome, and thank you for for joining the show through YouTube. I really appreciate your support. Definitely. Um, and here's a uh, another tip to uh, how sodium foods the limit. Uh, packaged foods such as chips. We forgot about that. A lot of people like potato chips which also has potassium in it or you got these corn chips you got these these takis uh and other um party flavored chips where they got the pretzels and the corn chips and the cheetos uh but packaged foods such as chips pretzels and salted nuts have uh high sodium in it as well so try to choose low sodium salt free or unsalted versions of these uh products but i mean you do have unsalted products but some people are like man these don't taste good <laughs> right uh let's see what m foster said and Foster say they are not required to put phosphates on the labels. Anything with phos as part of the ingredients is phosphorus. You're absolutely right. They should be avoided and eaten in very small amount. Max is 800 a day. 
Absolutely. Okay, uh, she lost sound. You have a blessed day, and thank you for these tips. Wow, great tip. And you know, Brother Moses, we're going to have to uh, come back possibly maybe next week and talk about uh, fostering. That's a, a very important uh, topic to talk about because high phosphorus levels can cause, uh, you know, osteoporosis. Uh, brittle or broke bones, uh, itchiness. It can cause bone disease. And so that's a very important topic uh, to, to talk about. So uh, let's look at some examples. Uh, we got nine minutes left in the show, but let's look at some, uh, talk about some examples of, of 32 ounces. Uh, you got like a picture. If one has a picture of, uh, of, uh, you pour it has like a beverage like pitcher of tea alcohol or whatever a pitcher equals 32 ounces or one quart and now you got your glasses uh equals eight ounces or one cup uh four eight ounce glasses equals one quart four eight ounce glasses equals one quart 32 ounces and what you do is multiply uh eight ounces times four give you 32 and that's where you get the uh one quart just from the four cups even though you think i'm gonna have this cup then you had this cup that that adds up Instead of just seeing it all in one big, large cup, you got to break down the small cups that you ingest during the day. You got to add all that and take it into account. And so more examples of 32 ounces, about two and a half cans of soda, or as I, as I said before, one bag of saline but this i had let some fluid out so a full bag of saline this is 32 ounces right here brother moses anything you want to say oh yes um uh, uh, um 32 ounces uh equivalent to one liter yes right all right all right all right uh i know some will be asking uh what is the ratio uh in terms of uh, uh in terms of liters that is that is the labeling that uh, we use in this that we use yeah in absolutely East Africa. Um, yeah and and the most important thing i guess the most important takeaway from this uh discussion or one of the important takeaways from this discussion is measuring and tracking your fluid i think that's very important to measure and track it because then Say for instance, get yourself, got your book, or it, you get one of those dry, small magnet, dry uh, boards that you could put on your refrigerator and you put down the date, like Sunday, March 17th. Say you got up this morning, had a small cup of coffee. I had one coffee, but you got to know how much that coffee, how much is it? You know, if you got a cup, was that four ounces? Or, you know, the small teacups, you got to measure. So make sure you know how much whatever cups or you use know how much fluid it holds so you you can measure 
Then same day, Sunday, for lunch, you had some juice, cup of juice. You chart that down. It's got to be intentional. And then at the end of the day, you add up everything you consume throughout the day. Or you can have a picture of fluid. You uh, have eight cups. And as you drink, you cross it out. And know that you got seven more that you can drink throughout the day. But there's ways to get around this to manage and limit your fluid intake. Brother Moses, you have anything you want to say? Oh, yes. Um, uh, uh, most of the time, um, uh, measuring becomes like uh, 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 tracking the, uh, right, uh, the right amount of fluid that you take uh, during the, uh, between dialysis treatment. And uh, uh, you realize that uh, if sometimes uh, we warriors, we are told uh, to, to always measure, then it's like uh, they are kind of uh, prisoned. And uh, this is why uh, I want uh, to encourage also warriors to normally know from just uh, uh, from the bird's eye view that this cup could be this uh, half ounce or or one ounce or 32 ounce you know uh, you are able just to deduce that this cup is this amount so when you are drinking water just like uh, i've always known this from this my glass this is a uh, uh, half a liter and then when i take it at the end of it i know that it i've taken one liter so when I take a piece of bite of uh, maybe uh, uh, watermelon especially, then I know I've just added some. So it is in that manner that you can always track. With, uh, well, it is to begin with, you can buy uh, uh, the measuring cup. But then as time goes by, as you get involved uh, and knowing how to track it, then just from uh, an eye point, it will really liberate you to, to have the right amount of water, Brother Steve. I've, I've always achieved that through experience. Yeah, I like the idea. I like the idea how you got that cup and what you just said. That's, that's a great, great tip, Brother Moses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So before we leave, I'm going to go over some, again, some uh, thirst busters, uh, tips for fluid control. So get your pens out. All right. And let's see. Oh, okay. And uh if you can use these tips, that'd be great. If you, you know, if you already know about them and heard it, then just let it roll off. But uh just know that controlling fluid intake will help fluid related hospitalizations. Controlling fluid intake will help prevent fluid-related hospitalizations. And so one, suck on frozen grapes, strawberries, blueberries, and lemon wedges. Two, chew gum to help produce saliva. Sports gum, such as quench gum, helps to relieve dry mouth and quench thirst. Use a spray bottle filled with limit flavored water to spritz the mouth. Limit salty and spicy foods as they will increase thirst. Enjoy a piece of hard candy like mint, lemon drops, or sour candies. Rinse with a refreshing mouthwash daily and practice good oral hygiene. Satisfy thirst by enjoying a frozen treat, such as a, a three fluid ounce frozen lemonade or flavored ice. 
good blood control. Uh, I'm sorry, good blood sugar control can help reduce thirst. So if you have diabetes type two, controlling your blood sugar can help reduce thirst. Also, controlling thirst can decrease the amount of fluid consumed and help achieve fluid goals. Achieving fluid goals can reduce cramping, swelling, difficulty breathing, and hypertension. And again, the recommended daily fluid limit is 32 ounces or four eight ounce cups. Four eight ounce cups is 32 ounces. Brother Moses, uh, this, this has been a great education show, um, especially for anyone who's just, just started out or just starting in dialysis and may not have that fluid, uh, the understanding of fluid management and what can possibly be causing them if they may be ingesting a little more fluid than what they want. What could be some of the culprits that can lead them to being thirsty? Anything that you want to say before we uh, conclude our, our broadcast? Oh, yes. Um, um, uh, just like uh, 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 taking care of uh, uh, your medication, fluid and diet uh, uh, goes hand in hand and far forms a uh, uh, integral part in uh, managing CKD. So sometimes uh, when we talk about uh, uh, fluid management, then uh, it is this is a very serious topic and uh, I know it is helping someone out there. So the way to go is always remember to track uh, the amount of fluids with the few tips we've given out. I wish you the best. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Brother Moses, for those words. Uh, so, again, as we um, talk about fluid management, uh, we hope you've gotten education from this broadcast and uh, managing your fluid intake and what can happen if one has fluid overload, the shortness of breath, the swelling, uh, the high blood pressure, possible hospitalization. So um, next week, we may be talking about added phosphorus. That's another important topic for for kidney warriors so with that being said brother moses i uh, wish you a uh healthy week uh wish you a safe and quality treatment at dialysis and that you make it through the week vibrant and and feeling strong thank you so much Yes, Thank yes. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have any last words you want to leave before we end the broadcast? Oh, definitely. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, every warrior who is watching or who will be watching uh, maybe later uh, this program that uh, we want to assure you that it will be always uh, live every sunday same day same hour so keep us posted what whatever you want us to discuss just reach out then we shall discuss it thank you so much i am your co-host uh moses kennedy your i agree ambassador. brother moses i agree so thank you again uh for everyone watching wherever you're watching have a good evening or a great uh, afternoon, and we'll see you next week, same time, same channel. With that being said, I'm Steve, the kidney nurse, along with my co-host, brother 
uh, Moses Kennedy, also known as the Kidney Ambassador, all the way from Kissimmee, Kenya. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Peace. Hello, I'm Darren. We have breaking news. More than 600,000 Americans have kidney failure. While the number of people with kidney failure is enormous, the number of people with its precursor, chronic kidney disease, is staggering. An estimated 31 million Americans, or about 10% of the US population. Diabetes and hypertension cause two thirds of all cases of kidney disease. One out of every three Americans is at risk for kidney disease, and kidney disease is now among the top 10 causes of death in the United States. In addition, nine out of 10 people with early to moderate kidney disease don't know they have it, putting their health in jeopardy. Are you at risk? For more information, contact urbankidneyalliance.org. The life you save may be yours.